Hi Read 585 and welcome to week 16. This is our final week of the semester and this is actually my last lecture for the course. There will only be one part narrated by yours truly and for part two you will be watching two of your colleagues presentations on our course wiki site and then giving them feedback. I will talk more about that in a minute but definitely chuckled to myself when a few of you emailed me to say wow this screencast-o-matic thing isn't as easy as you make it seem. I'm glad you got the opportunity to share my pain for assignment number four and I'm definitely looking forward to reviewing those this weekend. In other news, let's share some good news. There's actually a lot this week so I'm excited to end on a high note. Lynette shared with me that she was able to use her Read 585 cover letter to apply to a position. So good luck to you, Lynette. Keep us posted. Vince emailed me to say I was just rehired by UC Merced's Summer Transfer Academy and Resources for Success program for the summer. Congrats to you, Vince. He used his resume as part of his interview and hiring process. So way to go. I told you those assignments would come in handy. And then Kathy shared that her technology project she compiled last year using Skype with her son in Sweden and her kindergarten class was selected as a winner for a digital voice award. It was called Mondays with Matt and through the Skyping her son taught her kindergartners how all about life in Sweden and the culture there and they did things like tell time and talk about the weather and it sounds like she incorporated a lot of great standards with that. So that's our good news for the week. A few announcements. If you haven't already, please complete your student opinion questionnaire, aka the SOQ. I take the feedback very seriously. As you know, I'm always constantly planning and creating action plans as to how to improve the course and getting your feedback in order to do that. And I know the department also takes them very seriously in improving the program and improving the coursework and making selections about uh, instructors. So please complete that. Also a note that assignment number five, the instructional coaching activity, is due May 17th by 11.59 Pacific Standard Time. Earlier would be fantastic though, since I have to get these graded and turned around by Friday, May 23rd, so that doesn't even give me a full weekend, and all grades must be finalized through the... Um, through my portal by May 23rd. So May 17th is the absolute last day to submit anything. The only thing you really should be submitting on that day is your assignment number five, but it would help me out immensely if you did a little earlier. And also I think you would be happy to be done with your assignments a little earlier. So Please get everything turned in so I can post grades on May 23rd. Well, I have to post them on May 23rd whether or not you've turned it in. So my plan is to grade presentations this weekend and maybe next weekend if I don't get them done. I saw a couple of them are hours long, so it may take me a little longer. And then next weekend I'll be grading your participation activities and then the weekend of May 17th grading those um, coaching activities. So that's the plan. Upcoming assignments for week 16. So you have one reading this week. It is from our favorite journal, The Reading Teacher, an article from 2008 titled Situated Identities, Power and Positioning in the Work of a Literacy Coach. And this is probably in my top two articles, top three, for the semester right there under the differentiated coaching article. And it starts out with a little vignette about Kate, 
our literacy coach who's running around filling her cart to use as a mobile office and it says the last thing to go in the cart and sometimes the most important are the snacks she purchased for the teachers and I don't think I've commented on that but I always bring snacks to team meetings I attend with teachers and it definitely um, improves the mood of the meeting so I thought that was funny that that was in here and recommend you pick up some snacks some what is it, skinny pop popcorn bags I usually have, or honey wheat pretzels from Trader Joe's. Many good snacks come from Trader Joe's, so, so bring some snacks with you. Um, but this is a great article looking at, they, they followed Kate for uh, a few days and followed her in her role and looked at her work across the different contacts. They even talk about G, if you remember our friend, G and his situated identities, right? How you have a different identity or social position based on different settings. So it looks at Kate's power and positioning in three different situations and identifies how she goes from being a concerned colleague to a friend, to a co-learner, to an outsider. And it talks about implications of this and next steps you can take for your practice. So we're not going to be commenting or discussing this article, but it will be very helpful for your coaching assignment. So please read that article. Also read the Room to Improve article, which is just a few pages for assignment number five. So for your participation activity this week, like I said, we will not be doing the discussion forum. Instead, there is a PD feedback template and it looks like this it's on titanium and it gives you some suggestions for what to consider and then there's a table very simple positives and deltas for the format of the presentation and the content of the presentation so you can either bullet in here right save this and then embed it in your colleagues uh, wiki page we should definitely know how to do that because of our professional documents so type in this template then save it and upload it in their wiki page or at the bottom of their wiki page is usually a little comments box and you could just type in comments make sure you still include the same information but it can be of a different format so you're going to watch two presentations completed by your colleagues. Then you're going to either put the template in their site or at the bottom you're going to type in your comments. I'm going to score this participation activity using the class participation rubric. And this assignment is due May 10th at 1159 p.m. So coaching assignment is due the 17th. This participation activity is due the 10th. So you only have a week for this. Again, assignments due this week. Feedback to peers. You must do two in order to get 10 points. And they must be done well by May 10th. And then assignment number five is due May 17th. Don't be late. All right, a couple notes on assignment number five. Your final assignment is to coach a teacher at your site. All of the directions are in the assignment five folder. New scenarios and videos were recently posted on May 1st. So if you started this assignment prior to May 1st and you used the old scenarios, feel free to keep using those. But I would recommend using the new scenarios because they are better aligned to the Room to Improve article. Also, when it says copy-paste your part two of assignment number three into this, please do not copy paste 15 pages of part two in this because I've already read it probably three times twice at least so please reduce and condense that for me just give me the main main points there assignment number five is due on the 17th I've already said that let me know if you have any questions all right and then to wrap up a little congratulations happy dance you did it to you we covered a lot of ground this semester looking at the role of the literacy specialist, the literacy coach, 
going from analyzing data, using the data to drive decision making, doing professional development, being a coach. So there really is a lot to coaching, but hopefully you learned more about first the importance of data for decision making. So you need to be analyzing that data to see where the needs of your building or where your learners are. Then from there, you need to formulate a plan to address the needs and the challenges. And a good plan will include input from all stakeholders. Remember, we want to give them those surveys, see what types of professional development they are interested in doing, value their expertise and experience, and help them um, have them help you with the plan. Third, you should have learned about implementing ongoing professional development. Remember, we're not doing a one day sit and get and then never revisiting it again. It should be ongoing. It should be context embedded. It should span a year, maybe even two years. So it really becomes applied in their practice. And lastly, you hopefully learned more about instructional coaching which is a way to differentiate your professional development and apply it in a one-on-one -on -one setting. So we did a lot this semester to launch you for the last and final time. I have some inspirational quotes on how to inspire others. So my favorite quote that I think I shared with you before when I shared my plan, my professional development plan, was this, there are leaders and those who lead. The difference is that those who lead inspire us. So you can be a leader in title, but in order to be someone who truly leads, who leads people to change and causes them to act, you have to inspire them to do so, which is a lot easier said than done. So how do we inspire others? Well, over here, if you want to inspire others, allow yourself to become inspired by others. So this is a good reminder to really affirm and recognize and invest yourself in the work of those you are serving and coaching and working with. They will then in turn see that you are passionate and committed to their development and that will inspire them as well. So learn from those that you are working with. Just like Kate in our article for this week, you really want to be a co-learner with them. Going over here to this quote, there's no need to be perfect to inspire others. Let people get inspired by how you deal with your imperfections. So being a coach is challenging because you feel like you always need to have the answer for them. And it is important to have that expertise so that you are a credible source that they trust, but at the same time, there's no way for you to know everything. And it's okay to say, you know, I don't know if I have the best answer for that, but have you thought of this question or have you thought about this question or where could we look or go or what resource do I have from my coursework in my Fullerton Masters that I could access to get you that answer. So don't put this pressure on yourself to answer everything, but be a resource to them, guide them in the right direction, or ask them the probing questions to try to get to the answer. And then the last quote, remember how far you've come, not just how far you have to go. You are not where you want to be, but neither, where, neither are you where you used to be. So I thought this was a great quote to end with, thinking of our journey together this semester. Hopefully, um, you think about how far you've come. If you get a chance, I don't think you'll have a chance, but maybe go back to your initial definition of the role of a literacy specialist and think about all you've learned since you wrote that definition. I know it's been a grueling process to get there. You've had to do 30 minute PDs. You've had to do 30 page context analysis swap plans. Good grief. And um, you may not be where you wanna be. I know a lot of you had reservations about how to be a good 
coach. And I'm sure that you have learned a lot, but there's always more to learn. So you might not be where you want to be, and I'm not where I want to be as a coach either, but neither are you where you used to be. So I'm sure you've grown this semester. I've had a great time working with you. It really is bittersweet that it is the last and final lecture of the semester. I've definitely been looking forward to this on countdown, but at the same time, I've also really enjoyed learning and growing with you, working with all of you. You are a great group and it's been a privilege. And um, please stay in touch, especially if you're getting new positions out in the field. I would love to continue to be a resource for you. So good luck to all of you. Thank you, thank you for all of your hard work and for being a model cohort and providing me with lots of great samples of exemplary assignment twos and threes that I can be using in future semesters. Have a great last few weeks of the course and of the program, and if you need anything, always shoot me an email.